We see Riley Holbert on the left and Piper Lapine on the right. Yep, Chip, we have been talking about how we've been able, um, not purposefully, but we've avoided Lugia, even though it's been at a 33% um, meta share so far in this regional. We've avoided it all stream. So I think it's about time we see a Lugia versus a Lugia. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it <laughs> is indeed going to be a Lugia mirror match. Now, this is the same deck that Riley played to his top eight finish in Arlington a couple weeks ago. And I don't think right off the bat I'm noticing anything too different. It does have the Drapion in here, which that was one of his big cards in his top eight list from Arlington. I can't remember if he was playing Raikou or not in his Arlington list, but that is included in this list today. Over on Piper's side, nothing really super spicy to note either. Doesn't have the Drapion, but does have the Raikou of her own. Yeah, I was really wondering how, I mean, you know Lugia is going to be played, but how are they going to adapt this deck um, for the particular meta that they're going against mm -hmm. in this event in San Diego? What they're um, choosing to play based on what they think they're going to be competing against the most of right. throughout the day. How many matchups am I going to play against another Lugia? So, you know, most of the time you are sort of prepared for the mirror match, but especially now that you know that Lugia is such a huge part of the meta share. So here we go, kicking off our Swiss round seven, Riley Holbert versus Piper Lapine. We saw the fist bump and we are jumping into this match. Ooh. So starting with Piper, unfortunately, just an attach. Uh, of the Aurora Energy, discarding that Archeops into the discard pile, but passing straight over to Riley. Yeah, that is tough, and Piper knew it right away. You could see by her body language, she was not pumped about that opening hand. You, you have a huge advantage in the Lugia Mirror match when you go first, because you are the first player who has an opportunity to use that Summoning Star V-Star power. Mm -hmm. The issue, though, for Piper is that she was unable to get down a Lugia V, and a Pokemon has to be in play for a turn before you can evolve it into a V-Star. So she was not able to get that Lugia V down. There will be no option to use a Lugia V-Star on turn two. So even though she got an Archeops down, she is not happy with how this turn finished. Yeah, that is definitely a huge disadvantage, especially in the mirror as well. Like you said, Chip, you want to be the first person getting to those milestones that you have to check off in order to take the lead in this matchup. So things could still um, turn out uh, some spicy way, potentially, depending on what happens here. But that is definitely a huge setback there for Piper. But now we are over on Riley's side starting with the Dunsparce here so you know it's been kind of uh, contended will Dunsparce, uh, Dunsparce stay in the list will Manaphy stay in the list right. Riley is playing that Dunsparce uh, in the list as long as well as a Rangaroo and a Lugia V does come down to with that capture uh, energy that brought out the Rangaroo onto the bench as well. Yeah, both of these players actually choosing to still play Dunsparce and Manaphy in the okay. deck and probably just anticipating that um, the Reggies would be a relatively popular deck this weekend. <laughs> and it is. <laughs> yep, and that is uh, going to be something that I'm sure has paid off nicely for both of these players. Riley Holbert will choose to just get down Lugia and pass, holding off on using the research in hand. He did have Evolution Incense as well, and I think that's because he wants to guarantee the Lugia V-Star next turn. Um, though that is very interesting. I, I and don't think I'm missing anything. He just did not play a supporter that turn. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I didn't see a supporter go down. I think Piper on this turn actually top decked the Lugia V because must have, yeah. Yeah, you saw it come down right away. Um, and now we're going into an evolution incense here for another Archaeops as well. One is already in the discard, but we need to uh, get this other, the second one discarded as well. And that's exactly what's happening here with that quick ball, allowing Piper to also search out another basic Pokemon, opting for that Lugia V now. Uh, so we are seeing the Lugias finally yep. hit the, uh, the bench here, the field, but just slightly too late, but still. Piper is trying to line up her board as best as possible. Yeah, Piper's advantage of going first is gone. So she's yep. basically having to play this game like she went second. She's having to put down two Lugia V, which you don't really want to do unless you're going second in the mirror match because it's going to be something that is a liability potentially later on, but you need to have the option to get down a Lugia V star next turn. So both Lugia V having to come down. Yep, absolutely. And um, in the mirror match, especially for both these players, um, you know, obviously the the basic function of the deck is the same. Of course, get those Archeops out as soon as possible. We're over here on Riley's turn now, looking to do the exact same thing, really get those uh, milestones off 
as soon as you can. But it's also getting those Lugias, but also being able to transition into one prize attackers, into your other Lugia, trying to uh, lead on the prize cards as much as possible in the mirror match is so important. So making sure you have all your attackers um, ready to go, your alternate attackers, and make sure you just are ahead in prize cards. You're forcing your opponent to take one prize card knockouts while you're taking as many prize cards as you can at the same time. We do see the professor's research. Riley, yeah, wants to yeah, make sure he benches yeah. that evil tall first. And yeah, we'll go with the research, ditching the hand to draw seven, and right away does find the Lugia V-Star. Yep, and that is huge because we can see that summoning a star ability pop off here for Riley, bringing out any Archeops that are in the discard pile onto the bench. Of course, you can only use one V-Star ability per game, so there is, you can only bring this out once. So usually yeah. you want to have two Archeops, and that's exactly what Riley has here. Now able to use that Archeops ability, Primal Turbo, to accelerate special energy um, up to two per Archeops onto one of your Pokemon on the field. So that is why this deck plays so many special energies, uh, so many different types, and that's why you are able to play so many um, one prize card attackers like the Evital that has such a heavy energy requirement, but you can line up tons of energies uh, to be able to just take knocks with it. And that's, that's how this deck functions. But those energies going on to that Lugia V-Star on the bench. Riley will load this Lugia V-Star all the way up. Does still need to move the Dunsparts out of the active, but I do think there was an Aurora energy in hand. So at a minimum, that can move this Dunsparce to the bench. It's a little awkward with this deck. Like, Capture Energy is the best energy to accelerate with Primal Turbo, right? Because you don't want to use your Powerfuls until maybe a little later, and you definitely don't want to use your Auroras on Lugia V-Star. But Capture Energies are pretty nice to be able to get your basic attackers out later on in the game. So it feels a little weird when you have to pull them out of the deck, but it's definitely the right choice here for Riley. And he pulls them out in combination with the V-Guard Energy, which is going to make it a little bit harder, potentially, for Piper to respond. Yep, um, subtracting, I guess, 30 damage from your opponent's attacks uh, uh, from their V Pokemon. So, yeah, that is definitely an important energy to have on that Lugia V Star as well. So, we are over here on Piper's side now. Riley having taken that two prize card knockout on the Lugia V that was kind of just ripe for knocking out there for Riley on that turn. Piper uh, on the back foot here. Evolving into that Lugia V-Star now on the bench, we're seeing a quick ball to discard an Ultra Ball, get out another basic Pokemon from the deck. And of course, those two Archeops have been placed onto the bench from that Summoning Star ability on Piper's Lugia V-Star. And Oranguru will be the grab, it looks like, off of Quick Ball. Was debating getting the Manaphy for just a second. That makes me wonder if Piper is anticipating Riley to have the Raikou in the deck, but for now, we'll just get the Oranguru and we see that first Primal Turbo. Yeah, I think the Raikou is a pretty popular inclusion um, among yeah. mo most Lugia players, at least that I've seen out in the field today. So I don't think that is uh, a bad thing to guess on for sure. And having it in your own deck too as well. <laughs> so Piper does load the couple of capture energies up on the Radiant Charizard. That makes me think she must have a choice belt in hand and wants to go for the KO on this active. I actually don't think I see it, though. So no choice belt. Yeah. Not going to get the knockout on this active, but maybe just wants to, you know, hit it pretty hard. Yep, it is going to be a Marty instead for Piper. So drawing five cards, uh, Riley drawing four after they both shuffled their hands and put it at the bottom of the deck here. Yeah, did not find the choice belt. Is just going to have to be content attacking with this active, doing 250. This can set up for some Raikou plays, maybe. Later on, you know, if Riley's Evil Tall comes into the active spot, you can use Piper can use Raikou to knock out the Evil Tall and take prizes on the Lugia on the bench since Riley won't have had the opportunity to put Manaphy into play since his bench is full currently. Yep, absolutely. And that's and we're gonna be seeing the Radiant Charizard. I believe Piper actually started with the Radiant Star. Yes. Yeah, there's no Lugia. But yeah, now being able to utilize it, of course, with the uh, Excited Heart ability, subtracting energy costs from the attack based on how many prize cards your opponent has taken. So able to activate that Combustion Blast for that strong 250 for just those three energy that are on that Radiant Charizard. Piper choosing to get nothing off the Capture Energy could have potentially gotten the Manaphy, but for now, we'll just go with the attack. It looks like another Primal Turbo potentially being utilized here. Get some energy onto the Lugia just in case. 
Yep, always want to try to try to utilize as many of your, you know, four turns that you get. You get one energy four turn that you can play. So yep. as, as many energy that you can line up on your field, get a setup as possible is definitely important to do. So we are going to see uh, that combustion blast from the Radiant Charizard, of course, when you use that move. During your next turn, your the Radiant Charizard can't use that move again unless there's some sort of uh, switch out effect that yeah. allows it to. So that is going to do 250 damage onto that active Lugia V-Star on Riley's side. And now we're back over onto Riley's fields, starting with an Archaeops. Yeah, I'm interested to see what Riley goes for here. I don't think I saw like a boss or anything in his hand, so not going to be any opportunities to chase two prizes this turn, I don't think at least. Looks like a couple of energies coming onto the Evil Tall on the bench. Yeah, that Evitol is huge in this deck, especially in matchups where you have really big, beefy Pokemon. You can just pretty much knock them out for, for nothing, really. So <laughs> that is definitely a huge inclusion to this deck. It does take a lot of energy, but that is no hard feat for uh, yeah. a Lugia V-Star deck with those Archaeops being able to use that Primal Turbo. And as you just saw it there, Riley got so many energies lined up onto that Evitol. Let's to be see able if there's a boss or Serena here. Yeah, he does have the boss. Yeah. yeah. That is massive. And Piper, yeah, oh. <laughs> sending up this Lugia, you can tell she's not pumped about this. Nope. Knowing exactly what Riley is targeting down, of course, with this Evitol, and we are going to be seeing this knockout for for no damage as well, Chip, from that Evitol's amazing destruction attack to take out that Lugia V-Star. Now, this does open up the play for Piper that I mentioned with the Raikou. Yep. Can take three prizes potentially this turn. She will promote the Archaeops that can retreat pretty easily. That capture energy attached can go down no problem. Yep, that's definitely important there, being able to have pivot outs, always sending up your floater when you have to promote something. Uh, okay, we do see an evolution incense here from Piker, Piper searching through the deck, seeing what is actually in there. Um, I believe I saw the Raikou in there. I don't think it's in the price cards. Yeah, Raikou, I believe, is, is actually in, in her hand. Okay. Yes. But now the question, I think, is becoming what energy cards does she have? Does she have all of those Auroras? And I think I just see two potentially there. There is the third. Okay. Hiding there at the bottom of the deck. So yep. let's see that Raikou come down. And it seems like Amazing Shot is a good play this turn. Yeah. So... Um if you're kind of confused there, the evolution in sense, you don't have to actually retrieve something from it. You can just use it, look through your deck, shuffle up, and uh, put your deck back, which is exactly uh, what we're seeing here. Of course, we're also seeing that primal turbo from that Archaeops that's in the active position to get those energy onto the Raikou to be able to use that amazing shot. So this is huge. It's always, it's always cool to see that Raikou actually come into effect, Chip. And this is a really smart play from Piper as well, putting the V-Guard energy on to this Raikou, meaning True. that it will not be able to be KO'd by a Luminion. And it'll be harder for Riley to get the KO even with an Archeops. Uh, Archeops, excuse me, is not going to be affected by V-Guard, but really limiting specifically the Luminion play, which is normally yeah. something you may want to do. Riley, instead of going after this Lugia, is actually going to just chase down that Guru, try to target that prize, uh, that extra card draw potential from Riley's side. Absolutely. So now we're back over on Riley's side, only having to take two more prize cards. Of course, everything that is on Piper's side right now on the field is a one prize card Pokemon. So Riley having to work through that. Lots of damage counters as well, that 250 yep. from that Radiant Charizard on that active Lugia V-Star, uh, which is also two prize cards that Piper could easily take off the field too. So this is actually uh, getting pretty close here, Tip. Yeah, I guess, I guess the biggest thing that actually this V-Guard energy does for Ry uh, Piper, excuse me, is it means that Riley is unable to use Stoutland. Stoutland oh, won't true, be able yeah. to come in and take the double dip Fangs KO on the Raikou. And Riley could theoretically win if he had Stoutland plus boss onto the Oranguru, but that's so unlikely. And, you know, as Piper, you're still going to force your opponent to have it either way. For now, though, looks like Riley will be content to just load one energy onto this active Lugia V-Star. And he'll probably load up some energies onto this benched Radiant Charizard. Yep, that looks like that's exactly what we're seeing here, Chip. Loading up these energies onto the fields. But, yeah, you... 
You mentioned Selen. We haven't even talked about Selen at all, but it's actually a pretty major card, or at least it can be, depending on the scenario you right. get into with the mirror match. So that is definitely a huge inclusion, allowing you to take additional prize cards. So a one prize Pokemon becomes a two prize Pokemon, and that can really close out a lot of games for you as well. Yeah, and this is some great information for Piper as well moving forward. She sees that Riley has down the Heat Fire Energy, and we mm -hmm. saw already that he played the Hiding Darkness Energy. So he's got both copies of those cards in his deck. A lot of players will use to choose to play one or the other a lot of times, but Riley, realizing how powerful Charizard and Evil Tall are as attackers, wanted to have the option for both of these extra energy cards. Yep, so we are going to see just the knockout there on that Raikou from Riley's side. Now it's over to Piper to clean things up here, starting off with a quick ball, discarding yeah. an Archaeops, but not being able to take that game. Piper is just going to head into this next game against Riley. Yep, Piper saw the writing on the wall. Riley took a knockout, went to one prize remaining, had that Charizard waiting on the bench, and there was really no option for Piper Lapine to close that one out. And Riley Holbert. Maybe stealing a win there? Usually in the Lugia mirror match, when you go second, you kind of just have to sigh, shake your head, and yeah. wish that you had won the flip. But in this spot, you know, Riley gets a little bailed out and is able to, to sneak a game one victory away. Piper's going to be shaking her head after that one, but got to focus up and hope that you can make things happen a little better for you in game number two. Yeah, of course, if you do take the loss in the first game that you play, you get to choose or opt whether you go first or second. So if Piper does go first here and is able to be the first to get um, everything lined up and is able to take the win off of that game because of the setup, potentially um, Riley would be taking the loss and probably choosing to go first the next right. game that they play too. So that also plays into it as well. It's very good to take that first game and uh, hope for the best in the second game. Yeah, anytime you win a game, you're definitely going to be at an advantage in the set. Yep. Riley going to be feeling good going into this one, even though he'll be going second. You know, we'll see what kind of plays he can make to fight back in this game. We'll see for Piper if she can at least get down to Lugia V this game. That has got to be the, <laughs> yeah, the thing she's major. really crossing her fingers about here. Yeah, most definitely. That's uh, kind of what you want to see. Aside from, of course, the Archeops and the Discard, I think even more important than that is a Lugia down on the board state. So hopefully that is what we see here for both of our players so we can really see how this, uh, this matchup gets really technical and intricate for sure. I got to say, I got a little peek at Piper's hand, and I did not notice a Lugia V. There's one in the price card. Or though, so. an out to a Lugia V. So no. if she does not find a Ultra Ball or Quick Ball or Lugia V off of this top deck, it's going to be a little awkward. We're getting into yep. it here. Yeah, speaking of Ultra Balls, there was two Ultra Balls in the uh, prize cards there for Riley, as well as Aivital in the prize cards, too. Starting with a Manaphy on both players' sides here, Chip. Yep, of and course. Piper was able to draw into the capture energy for turn, so yes. is now going to breathe a sigh of relief Thank and get down this Lugia goodness. V. Yeah, you see that first card right there up front. That is major for Piper, so that capture energy was huge for this turn. So definitely very important. It's kind of funny seeing both of our players here start with the Mana Fees. So it's already in play at this point now, Chip. Yep, pretty solid start here for Piper. Other Outside of this hand, she's uh, outside of this turn, I should say, she's got a pretty solid hand. It looks like a couple Archaeops and a Luminion. So we could see a research on the next turn and very likely a Summoning Star, V Star Power. Going to be feeling pretty good about this spot. Neither of these players really mind starting the Mana Fee. It's actually... I guess if you know your opponent plays Raikou, something you want potentially yeah. play. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, Riley does know that Piper does play it because we saw in the last game. So that is definitely, uh, like I said, just something that's already in play here for you to start. But let's see if Riley can get his own Lugia. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. Put onto the bench. Um, there's a lot of discard cards in hand, but there is no Archeops, which is the one thing you do want to discard. Of course, using these cards, you can get one out, uh, which is exactly what we're going to see, that Ultra Ball. Discarding an Aurora Energy and a Heat Energy as well um, to get out a Pokemon from the deck. Of course, we did, as we said before, Chip, see two Ultra Balls as well in the prize cards for Riley. So. Yeah. Uh, dwindling down a lot of those discard materials. They're still quick balls, so. Yeah, still ways to get rid of those Archaeops. You also have Aurora, Aurora energy, energy as you attach yep. return, but 
this hand is pretty awkward, right? <laughs> He's got like four energy cards in his hand, has to discard two to the Ultra Ball, does find the Archeops and discard it now. The question becomes, what do you do? Luminion is going to be the obvious choice, and is it Marnie or Research? And looks like Riley recognizes that he cannot afford to research away no. those extra energy cards. Even though it's less cards for him, he just has to go with the Marnie. Yeah, you still have to make sure you're conserving as much energy as possible. You're using so many energies in this matchup that you need to really keep track of all of them in in this set. So we are going to be seeing this Marnie from Riley here in this turn which means both players are going to shuffle their current hands, put it at the bottom of their deck. Riley would be choose, uh, drawing five cards while Piper draws four. So you can actually put your opponent in a really sticky situation. This is pretty huge, getting that hand disruption as well from Riley's point of view. Pretty great. Yeah, I mean, that this is what you want to do in the mirror, especially when your opponent did not put any Archeops into the discard pile. It's now going to be even harder for Piper to pull off the summoning star. Well, I, I thought. She drew into the second evolution incense for turn, and I think has Serena waiting in hand. Oh, so my goodness. Going to have a pretty easy time <laughs> getting off the summoning star oh V-star star power now. Wow. When you marty your opponent into the perfect hands, pretty much, is what just played out in <laughs> front of us. You hear Riley laughing about it as yep. well, chuckling that, yep, yeah. you just got into double Archeops off the Marnie. Cool. <laughs> Marnie, double-edged sword there sometimes. I swear. Okay, so we see both those evolution incenses coming down getting those archaeops this is huge because now we are going to be able to see the discard of them uh from the hand if there is oh no you said there's a serena yep. so so we're chilling we're gonna see that uh summoning oh. star <laughs> even better than serena oh that's a research oh here we go research discarding that entire hand drawing into a fresh seven cards so in a really great position now here for Piper, a fresh seven hand. You love to see it. All, all from a Marnie too, Chip. Yep, all off of the Marnie. Two Archeops getting slammed into play as soon as they can be with that V-Star power. And now Piper has some choices. What do you attack with in this spot? There's the Evil Tall, there's the Radiant Charizard, and there's even Lugia itself. You do run a little bit of a risk if you choose to attack with Lugia here. That Riley would be able to build up to a one-hit knockout on your Lugia yeah. V-Star with a bunch of powerful energies. But it might be the type of situation where you just kind of have to force Riley to have it. Instead, though, Piper looks like she wants to load up the Archeops as an attacker. Yeah, I mean, the Archeops does have that speed wing for 120 damage, even more if you uh, play any powerful color colorful energy, uh, but it's actually going to be less because there's a double turbo yeah. on the Archeops there. So, but yeah, still being able to at least get a little bit of damage here out on the field. Like I said, this the way this deck functions is you're, you're kind of pivoting into these one prize card attackers for a lot of this game and taking out as many knockouts as you can while also simultaneously um, having as little liability on your board state as possible. So we are going to see some more energies coming down here, that heat energy and another double turbo being put onto that Evital for that second Archeops Primal Turbo. Yep, setting that option up so that if this active Archeops goes down, or the Archeops that I'm assuming will go into the active spot this turn, if that does get KO'd by Riley on the next turn, you're still just one Primal Turbo away from powering up Evil Tall as an attacker. Yep, most definitely, and that's uh, that's what we're seeing sort of play out here. A powerful energy going to be placed onto that Lugia V-Star for turn as well. And here we go, that Archeops being promoted into the active uh, spot, taking out the Manaphy as well. So no more bench protection here on Riley's side, taking a prize card for that Manaphy and going into a Luminion V on Riley's side, promoting it into the active and starting off with an Evolution Incense to search out a Evolution Pokemon. Looks like Lugia V-Star will be the grab. I do think there were a couple Archeops in the hand, or at least one, with one already being in the discard pile. So Riley's going to be feeling pretty good about this spot. We'll see what options he has to get that last Archeops in the discard pile and where these energies go. Luminion, as Awkward Return, is an okay attacker, but it doesn't knock out the Archeops. Yep. All right, so we are seeing the capture energy come into play here, which allows you to search out a basic Pokemon and put it straight onto your bench. Of course, Riley also looking through the deck, as we said before. Ooh, I did see that Raikou yep. in there, Chip, uh, for Riley. It looks like it was being eyed up a little bit there as well. 
you know, of course, that Manaphy is still in play as well on Piper's side. But any basic Pokemon, Oranguru is being put to the front to another great card uh, that protects you in so many scenarios in this game. But it's going to be a Lugia V chosen for Riley put onto the bench there. Yeah, this is interesting. Two prize attackers all over the board here right now, Chip. Yeah, Archaeops is just kind of an awkward Pokemon to knock out <laughs> as yeah. Riley, or just in the mirror match in general. It looks like Radiant Charizard coming down. That could be the attacker of choice. Riley just wants to get this other Lugia V, knowing that it might have to be where he goes to close this one out. And we are going to see that Summoning Star ability from Riley to get out those Archaeops. Yeah, like you said, Chip, 150 HP, kind of an awkward HP to have. But we're seeing that first Primal Turbo here from Riley, attaching a V-Guard energy to uh, protect from any V uh, Pokemon attacks there. You try to make it as difficult as possible for Piper to get the knockout on Lugia V-Star. It is Still possible, obviously, you know, the main way being evil tall, but you Did could you. reach for a big knockout with Lugia V-Star if you got all of your powerful energies and choice belt, but if Piper has the Aurora energies remaining, I think evil tall is going to be a pretty good response to this Lugia V-Star. Yeah, and it is on the board looking very threatening yeah. as well, Chip. Uh, that, is, that is a huge part of this game, too. You want to make sure you are assessing your, your, your danger levels, your the threats that are on board that you're up against right now on Riley's side. But we are going to see the promotion of that Lugia V-Star into the active with all those energies. So many <laughs> energies, it's hard yeah. to uh, even lay out on the board here. Riley will figure <laughs> out what order these cards go in eventually. And uh, yeah. <laughs> this Lugia now coming into the active will take the knockout. One prize going to Riley, tying this game up. But Piper's board position, even though she's only got one Archaeops, is going to be quite a bit stronger. Yeah, and of course, I think that is two powerful uh, energies as well on Riley's active Lugia V-Star, too. So yeah. doing even more damage, too. But of course, Yvetal, um doesn't care about that V-Guard energy that is on it. As you said, Chip can just take the knockout regardless as long as the energy requirement is there for Yvetal. That Archaeops being utilized over on Piper's side now for two Aurora energy. She was debating for a second getting the... V-Guard energy, maybe to protect against a potential Luminion, make it harder for Riley to respond to this Evil Tall, force him to attack with the Charizard a little earlier, but thought better of it and just chose to get the other Aurora energy. Wanted to hold off on attaching the one in hand, potentially. All right, so we're seeing the Luminion come out of the deck here on Piper's side. Of course, when it goes to the bench, if it goes to the bench, it allows you to search out a supporter card from your deck. Yep. So really, it gets you out of a lot of sticky situations. I mean, we kind of saw Riley utilize it pretty much perfectly in the beginning of this game to make sure that he could actually have cards for the, the first turn yeah. um, that he took. So yeah, that is major. And we are going to see that knockout here from Piper's side, taking that Lugia V-Star out of play and taking two prize cards for it as well. So Riley can respond to this with the Luminion if he wants and hold off on utilizing the Charizard until maybe a little later. It does appear like Luminion will be the promotion at a minimum. You know, it does have that one retreat. We saw Riley promote it last turn and then just retreat it off with a capture, but he will have the option to attack with it here if he wants. Yeah, most definitely. Um, we will see what Riley decides to do here. But Piper, I think just having still a really strong uh, board state here and only three prize cards left as well for Piper to take. Riley uh, bringing out the double fish here, Chip. That yeah. second Luminion V hitting the bench here, allowing Riley to search out another supporter card. It is going to be that Marnie. And if it's play, that's going to be even more disruption over on Piper's side as well. Yep, and Riley is getting the energy in play necessary to take the knockout with the Aqua Return. One more use of the Archaeops will get another energy onto the Charizard, get that ready to be a potential attacking threat. And then combining this play with the disruption of Marnie, when Piper has not been using a Ranguru or anything like that to prep the top card of her deck, that could be potentially devastating. 
Yeah, and that is uh, what we're about to see right now, Chip. is It's definitely going to come down to this. It's a huge pivotal moment in this game. But Piper has kind of had the luck on her side so far. That other Marnie playing into the exact card she needed. I can't really see what's in the hands for her here. But Riley drawing into five cards off that Marnie. Piper drawing into four. And we are going to see the promotion of that Lugia V-Star after the knockout there on the Yvital. Looks like Piper does have some play, though. Quick Ball can get any basic out of the deck, and it seems like Luminion for boss's orders is the immediate grab on Piper's side of the field. Wants to chase down a two-prize Pokemon so that all she needs to do to close this game out is take a one-prize knockout on anything on Riley's side of the field. Yeah, Ooh, it is, it's coming down to this chip. We could see this game go to a 1-1 potentially between these players in the mirror mat. We're seeing the boss's order there on that Lugia V being promoted into the active. Yep, and that brings that up. And yep. Piper will also throw a couple energies onto this Lugia V star, dealing 280 damage right now with its Tempest Dive attack. 220 base and then three powerful energies more than enough to KO just the basic Lugia V here. Yeah, absolutely. Such a powerful move. Um, if there was a stadium in play, it also allows you to uh, discard that stadium. You have the option to as well, which is huge. So yeah, Lugia V-Star, I mean, you can begin to see why this deck is so powerful. You pretty much have access to whatever Pokemon you have in your deck that you can get out and, and you can play whenever you want because of that Archeops. And yep. look at that, Chip. We are going to see the scoop up there. And Piper is going to take this to a 1-1 here, at Chip, in this game. So holding on here. Uh, wow, that was awesome to see. But as, as we said, Chip, before, you know, going into a 1-1, one, one, of course, Riley not taking the win there is is going to opt to go first, I'm going to bet. 99% yeah, <laughs> probably, I right? would put any <laughs> amount of money that Riley Holbert's <laughs> choosing to go first in this one, without a doubt, here Absolutely. in game number three. And it's going to be the story of uh, how well can he set up. And that's what it feels like in these mirror matches is how well can you set up on turn one? And as the opposing Lugia player, when you go second, can you stick them with a Marnie turn one? And that's what Riley yeah. tried to do here in this second game. Piper was just able to get out of it. Had the way to get the Archeops in the discard pile, had the research, just had pretty much everything she could have hoped for off of just a five cards from the Marnie, four from the Marnie, and then one draw for turn. Yeah. Uh, had everything she needed and was able to get running and just kind of ran away with that game. It didn't really feel like Riley was hanging around in that one for long. So he's gonna try to make that happen on his side of the field this game. I mean, that's why they say, you know, you hear people saying all the time that Marnie's a lie, you know, <laughs> <laughs> from, from so many of our players, because that's what happens sometimes. But I feel like I also equally see as many times where you Marnie someone into a dead hand. So that is very much what you're looking to do with those hand disruption cards. It's so important. Uh, you know, there's, there's no simultaneous play in Pokemon between players. So anytime you do get to have some sort of disruption on your opponent's side, that's definitely a strong position to be in, but it has to work. So here we go, our prize cards. There was that Raikou V I saw on Riley's side in the prize cards. Yeah, so. that, that Raikou and that Evil Tall, those amazing yeah. rare Pokemon, both of them being in the prizes is gonna be a little awkward potentially for Riley. And he does top deck that Evolution Incense, I believe, allowing him to get the Archeops, which is going to be very nice. Get that in the discard pile so that if Piper does launch a Marnie this turn, that's already down. That's one piece of the puzzle solved. You're not having to get two Archeops down off of just a four or five card hand. Yeah, that is definitely big. So really the setup is like we've been discussing. Uh, you hope to have a strong setup. Of course, Riley going first can't play a supporter. So is really only able to get as many Pokemon down as possible. Of course, that Lugia V being the most important to get down onto the field here. And then those Archeops in the discard pile. That's what Riley's looking for, as well as, you know, an energy attachment would be great too. But as long as you have those pieces, you're in a pretty good position to line up your cards. And of course, there was a professor's research, I think yes. I saw in Riley's hands too. So the next turn is, is gonna be great there for Riley. As the double turbo could put it onto the bench Lugia, also could attach it to the active Luminion. So you have the option to either Aqua Return or just Retreat next turn. More than likely it'll be used to Retreat since Riley would love to take a two-prize knockout on Piper's active Lugia V, but we'll see how things develop. 
And there we go, just the energy attachment for turn and the pass back over to Piper here, starting off with an Ultra Ball, discarding one of those Archaeops. So we're gonna see that hit the discard pile there, I believe that is also, is that Lost Vacuum, I think, also yes. for that discard. So going into the deck, searching out any Pokemon, of course, that, uh, that Archaeops is a very, <laughs> Easy pick, I think, yep. for Piper there, especially when you have a discard uh, card in your hand like that Quick Ball to just be able to discard it right away and go back into the deck for another basic Pokemon. Even now, if uh, Piper didn't have some sort of supporter, you could always just go for that Luminion and get the supporter. Like we said, if you get that Marnie and you're able to disrupt, that is huge. So that might be what we see. The Luminion is going to come down, but it is going to be a professor's research here on Piper's side. So maybe something in the hand that she must be okay with being able to discard here and get seven fresh cards into the hand. I think this is Piper probably valuing her own setup a little more than worrying about disrupting Riley because she yeah. is feeling pressured right now to put a second Lugia V down because if she does not, and Riley just knocks out the one Lugia V, then the game is all but over on Piper's side of the field. So she would rather try to draw as many cards as possible and increase her chances as much as possible to find another Lugia V than yep. anything. And I think that's a really smart decision that's so important for Pokemon players to do. You know, if you pay too much attention to the disruption side and then you're stuck on your side, you're not going to win the game. So <laughs> it's always very important to make sure you can uh, set up your board state first, prioritize that first, and get a strong setup. But we did see that Dunsparce come down and then the retreat of that Lugia V back to the bench. Yep. No second Lugia V there for Piper, and we're back over on Riley's side. Yep, but Riley's not going to be able to punish here. He doesn't have a boss or a Serena to bring up that Lugia V. Just going to have to be content with the research. And, you know, as long as he can just keep ahead here, he's going to feel just fine. Does have the option to even Aqua return with that Luminion here. As off of this research, he was able to find plenty of ways to get this second Archeops in the discard pile. Yeah, there, there is more than one definitely in there. And it looks like it's going to be a quick ball to get it into the discard pile and search out another Pokemon from the deck. What do you think Riley's searching for here, Chip? Could try to get the Guru, try to establish that pretty quickly. It's been a card that many players opt for in order to try to counteract potential Marnies. Could eye up a second attacker. Maybe even Manaphy could be decent knowing mm -hmm. that Piper plays the Raikou Amazing Rare in her list, though I don't think there's much that the Raikou is going to be threatening unless you bench the Guru initially. So yeah. it does look like Guru will be the choice. So many options here, but we are going to see that little monkey come down onto the bench here, and we are going to see that V Star Power Ability Summoning Star as well for game here, taking out those Archaeops from the discard pile and straight onto the bench. So two Archaeops here, the optimal, of course, what you want to see. So you can accelerate as many energy as possible to your Pokemon each turn. Such a strong card. And uh, now we're going into an evolution incense here on Riley's side, searching out an evolution Pokemon from the deck, another Archaeops, uh, even though you're not able to take it out. Uh, later down the line, because of course you can only use one V Star power per game. It's still important to make sure you're thinning it through your deck so you're not drawing into that pretty much dead card from your deck. Yeah, not going to be a useful card. And if Riley wants to play Ultra Ball, you'd rather Ultra Ball away the Archaeops and something else than Ultra Ball yeah. away the Evolution Incense and leave the Archaeops in your deck. So, really smart decisions and sequencing here from Riley. Definitely, and that's what we're going to see, that Ultra Ball with the discard of those two cards and searching out another Pokemon. This can be any Pokemon from Riley's deck here, opting to go for the Manaphy. As we discussed, Chip, not a bad idea. Of course, we know that Piper does play that Raikou. Also, at this point in time, I'm sure Riley has already identified that the Evital and the Raikou are in the prize cards yes. for him, too. So All of his attackers. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. yeah. And that can actually get into some really sticky situations down the line if Riley's not able to draw them out of the prize cards. But I believe they're kind of very, I think they're actually in the, the upper tier of the prize cards. So I don't know. We'll see yeah, how I think the Evil out. Tall was down in the bottom. So oh, there's okay, a, that's good. a decent shot. He can grab it off of one of his early prizes. Is going to use the Primate Wisdom first, though, before shuffling in with the Luminion V. Yep, so being able to switch one of the cards in your hand with one of the top of your deck. Looks like he wanted to put the V-Guard energy back into the deck so that he could search it out with the Archaeops. 
Yeah, that is another uh, really great way that Oranguru comes into play. When you need to get those energies back into the deck in order for you to get them out with the Archaeops is, is uh, super important there. So we are going to see that Luminian V using that Aqua Return, which allows you to pretty much just jump back into the deck here for Riley after taking a knockout there on that Dunspar. So now we are taking that prize card. It wasn't the Evital, but we're so close to that Evital being drawn in that next prize card, most likely for Riley. Now we're over here on Piper's side of the field. We're going to start off with an Evolution Incense, searching out an Evolution Pokemon from the deck. Lugia V is still on the bench here. No energy cards in play. No V-Star yet, no Archaeops yet, but there's uh, a lot of cards to be played here on Piper's turn. Just going to thin out an Archaeops. It looks like there's already the Lugia V-Star in hand, and we know that there's two yep. Archaeops in the discard pile already. So Piper has plenty of choices, plenty of ways that she can try to thin things out. And <laughs> yeah, Riley knows that Piper is chilling on a pretty good <laughs> hand if she's choosing to discard a Lugia V-Star right now. Yeah, absolutely. We're about to see Mons. Mons come down onto the field here for Piper. So Piper does have an option here to go for Stoutland if she wants to. And that is what she True. is debating going with because Riley chose to send up the Manaphy here. This is a way that Piper Ooh, could yes. try to counteract that. Now Piper has an option to go for a 2-2-2 two, two, two prize race line, especially since Manaphy goes down, you have the option to Raikou for two prizes later on. So what Piper is trying to set up here is take two prizes on Manaphy, take two prizes on Lugia V-Star, and then use Raikou's amazing shot to close things out. Yeah, that Stoutland is so great. As, we, as I mentioned before, Chip, in this mirror match, it can come in uh, very clutch in these certain positions that we're seeing Piper in now. Of course, loading it up with that powerful energy so you can boost its attack. The Double Dip Fangs only does a base of 40 damage, so it's really important to take knockouts uh, with those powerful energies stacked up onto it. And if you're able to take an additional prize card off of a one prize Pokemon, yep. that's huge. Absolutely. I mean, the whole reason that Riley wanted to send up this Manaphy is that Piper would only get one prize off of KOing yeah. it, but now she's going to yield two from it. And this sets up nicely, like I mentioned, for Piper potentially to get back into this one. It's going to put a little bit more pressure on Riley. So Piper's really found a good strategy here in this matchup where she went second. Here we go. MVP Doggo with the three powerful energies on there, being able to take two prize cards off of that Manaphy. Huge play here from Piper's side of the field. And we are going to go back over to Riley to see now how he responds to what just happened there. So I something Riley could theoretically do in a spot like this would be try to boss an Archaeops. If you take a boss KO on Archaeops here, your opponent Ooh. actually doesn't have the option to get Evil Tall set up in one single turn. Yeah, so definitely slowing down the deck for sure. That's, you know, that's why you see Lugia players, the optimal is always having those two Archaeops to make sure that you can line any of your Pokemon up with uh, whatever energy you pretty much need. But definitely taking one of those out is a strategy we've seen time and time again from these Lugia players as well, because that hinders your opponent so much. So that is most definitely a play Riley could come up with here in this turn. We shall see going through the deck right now here on Riley's side, uh, addressing all or looking at all of the energy that are still left in the deck, choosing to attach two captor energies on to that Lugia V-Star. Of course, if they're not attached from hand, the yep. effect does not activate. So if they're coming out from the Archaeops, they're just being attached as a colorless energy. But that's A-OK -okay because Lugia V-Star needs it to do its attack, yes, so yeah. <laughs> we are good on that front. So one Archaeops down, one more to go, but no alternate attackers. Of course, you could put the energy onto an Archaeops as well yeah, if you really want Yeah, just give yourself wanted. the retreat option. I think yeah. Riley may have something else in hand, though, that he wants to debate. He's got an Ultra Ball, so maybe he wants to get a different Pokemon, potentially. Ultra Ball could find the Luminium for the boss play if he wants True. it. I do think Piper, I can't quite tell. I think she's down. Her fourth powerful colorless, I think it got discarded on turn one. So if that's the case, there is no threat of Double Dip Fangs taking a multi-prize KO next turn because yeah. Oranguru has 120 hit points. So if Piper is down that last powerful colorless, that would not be an option. It looks like, though, Riley will just take the KO on the active. And now Piper has that Evil Tall opening. Yeah, and that is, that is going to be huge here for Riley. Taking that Evil Tall out of the prize cards now, Piper being able to respond 
as well to this Luminian V being uh, positioned into the active spot. Evolution Incense searching through the deck here. I believe nothing was retrieved nope. from it, though, so just shuffling up now. And what are the cards that Piper had left in hand, Chip? Yeah, that's the big question here. We'll see what else she has access to. Listening on a Lugia V, that's not great. Looks like Serena, Serena to draw cards. Just four cards off the top, looking for some help. Definitely. There's an energy, a quick ball of Marnie there. Of course, you can't play more than one supporter per turn. So those supporters aren't going to be helpful this turn. We are no. going to see the quick ball discarding the Marnie, though. So I suppose yes. helpful as the discard fodder there to that quick ball, searching out a basic Pokemon from the deck. Yeah, and this is what Piper is wanting to set up here. She's got the evil tall and is going to get that into play. Now, the question is, where do her last two prize cards come from? And yes. I think that's where it's going to be tough, because if you're putting three uh, different types of energy on the evil tall here, you're putting two Auroras and the heat fire or three Auroras, whatever combination it might be, you actually don't have enough energy in the deck to even attack with Raikou to close out the game. Oh, no. She doesn't have a speed lightning or anything like that to try to fuel that extra requirement. So. In theory, she could have gone on the next turn and bossed an Archaeops and KO'd both Archaeops and a Ranguru for her last two prizes. But in practice, that's just not going to be an option because there's just not enough energies in the deck. Yeah, that is definitely a sticky situation to be in for sure. But we are going to see those two energy uh, right now being put on Saeevatol, of course, lining it up to be able to take this knockout on the Lugia V-Star for this turn. It's going to be huge for this turn. Uh, of course, the Luminion v uh, already able to retreat out of the active position with that capture energy. So no issues there for Piper. But yeah, definitely down the line, what are we going to see is the question here. A Rangaroo now coming down onto the field. Ooh, no, actually going to be subbed. <laughs> it's Debating subbed again. Yeah, 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 that's tough. Radiant Charizard, though, is going to come down um, versus that Rangaroo onto the bench here, of course, as Riley takes more prize cards, the cost of that attack does go down for the Radiant Charizard. But at a minimum, you still have to have the requirement of the fire energy. So that can be subbed for an Aurora energy or the heat energy is fine too. But uh, that that is part of the cost for that Radiant Charizard. But we are going to see that knockout here from that amazing destruction. Amazing it definitely is. From that Yvetal taking out that Lugia V-Star with no damage. Absolutely wild to see. And one of the major reasons Lugia is such a good deck because of this Yvetal. Um, so that is huge. Take another, another two prize cards, going down to two prize cards. Riley, of course, at three here as well. And we're going to see the Ultra Ball discarding that Stoutland and the Raikou here from Riley's side. Yep, this could fetch a Luminion potentially, though I don't know that Riley wants to put a two prize Pokemon no, in play. Yeah. That's kind of his lose condition at this point. He would only go with the Luminion if he wanted to use Aqua Return, and Piper, to play around with that smartly, put the V-Guard energy down, so that's not even going to be an option for Riley. Looks like Charizard could just be the grab here. Yeah, I think that's probably what we're going to see. I don't, don't know what else would come down here for Riley. Potentially, because like you said, Chip, you don't want to put a two prize Pokemon because that is a sure way yeah. to lose the game. So, so here's what has to happen for Riley. Yeah. If Riley wants to win this game, he needs to knock out this Evil Tall this turn and then on his next turn be able to use Boss's Orders or Serena in order to bring up either the Lugia V Star or the Luminion V on Piper's bench in order to close the game out. So he's going to do everything in his power to make sure that that is as high of a possibility as humanly possible. That it literally, no matter what Piper does, she can't play him out of that. So if he's got a Quick Ball or Luminion or Boss in his hand, I totally expect to see him use Primate Wisdom to put that on top of the deck. And it does appear that Serena is sitting there in his hand. Yep, we're going to see that second Archaeops, uh, that Primal Turbo coming into play here for Riley as well, getting those energy needed. Looks like the hiding energy and a double turbo being eyed up here. Aurora was also put to the front, but those are the yeah. two that are going to be placed onto that Evital. Yeah, Riley doing everything possible to make sure that there's no boss's orders, stall plays available to Piper to try to draw the game out as long as possible. He is really trying to 
think through every possible scenario here to make sure that he's not going to uh, miss out on anything. And he's actually even there has go. the extra powerful energy in hand to bring up Luminion here and will take the knockout, oh, needing just one awesome. more prize to close this out. Yeah, that is huge. A two prize card knockout there for Riley. Going down to one prize. Piper still at two prize cards here and only dying down one prize Pokemon at this point in time. So this is getting spicy, Chip. That is for sure. Yeah, and there's really not much play here for Piper. She's got the Raikou, which if there was enough energy in the yeah. deck to close this out, that would win her the game. She could knock yeah. out the Archeops, which is weak to Lightning, and knock out either Oranguru or Evoltal on the bench. But with only one or two Aurora energies remaining in the deck, there's just no way that she can make that work. Just going to have to bench the Oranguru instead. And this has come down to the wire. We're only at a minute and 12 seconds left on the clock as well. So this is finishing up just in time here so far for this match. But it has gone all the way. We're just going to see the knockout yeah. there on that Archeops. And all Riley needs is enough energy in the deck. And he'll be able to close this out. Primal Turbo fetches here we go. one Aurora energy. And is there a, another one? I think he did draw one for turn, but does have the heat fire. That will be enough for amazing destruction to KO the evil tall. And Riley Holbert wins this game. Wow, what a match there. The grindy Lugia v Star mirror match. But Riley is going to take the win against our two time this season regional champion, Piper Lapine. So congratulations there to Riley for that incredible showing. Uh, you know, that was that was a Lugia match right there, Chip. <laughs> it was indeed. Congrats to both players. You know, very well played on both ends. Riley just kind of was on the better end of things in that one. Was obviously able to get a little lucky by the fact that Piper did not have a great setup in game number one. No Lugia V down. Yeah. And he was able to capitalize, right? He played very well to make sure he could capitalize on that position when it became available to him. And he gets to a win here, going to a six and one record. Piper will move to five, one and one. Still just fine, just needing one more win at some point in this one. She came into this round at five, oh and one. So. She's still fine. You know, just needs one more win in these next two. Yeah, exactly. Can still clean it up, get into that day two for both of these players. And that is what they're aiming for. Uh, and bringing this deck to into a day two, I mean, there's going to be a lot more of those Lugia mirrors. I'm sure that they are going to see. I wonder how many of them they've already faced because both of our players in that match kind of went flawlessly throughout all of their moves there. You saw both of them utilizing all of their cards to the absolute fullest, planning out each and every response.